All right, one of the important things to feel comfortable with in the LineTrender GUI and with the LineTrender segmentation algorithm in general is to uh, begin getting a sense for how the different fitting parameters and date windows affect the uh, temporal segmentation. So really the best way to do that in, in each new forested or non-forested ecosystem, new part of the world, with different image archives, etc., is to is to just start looking at areas and, and changing the parameters. There's some general notions that we can give as to what kind of behavior you can expect, but it's quite dependent on where you are. In general, the fitting algorithms um, do pretty well with generic parameters anywhere in the world, um, but it always requires some attention to the detail, especially about the date windows that we use for the image collections. So let's begin by looking at the, uh, the area that I've indicated in the training manual, and uh, I've already typed in the coordinates that I've noted there. Um, for exploring the parameter sets. And so I, I'm, I've typed those in, I'm gonna hit Submit Pixel and we'll see what happens. And this is this is with a fresh start of the GUI. So all of the parameters and all the image date windows, et cetera, are, are completely as they come sort of in the default mode. And, and the chart on the right, you can see for this pixel, this is what it, this is what happened. So the gray line is the source reflectance imagery and it's pretty noisy. Um, you can see that there's actually not much of a signal even for a human to make sense of uh, in this kind of situation because there's just a lot of movement around uh, the over, over time. The algorithm does its best. It, it, it fits a straight line to it, which in fact statistically is not a bad rendition of what we're actually seeing here in gray. Um, but we know we can do more in this case because we know that this uh, pixel had some actual disturbance. So how do we actually fix that? So I've, I've, I'm gonna leave the pixel time series option window for a second. I'm gonna go back up to the land trender options window. So the way the whole GUI is set up is that any time we do a submit uh, for a land render run, whether it's for an RGB change, uh, pixel time series, or any of the others, um, the the uh, the GUI looks at the current status of the land render options in all these boxes. So if you update them here, you have to resubmit whatever it is the time series or the RGB thing for it to uh, sort of take. Um, so right now the options that we've got are the 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 beginning time. Uh, the beginning image date year is 1984. Uh, the start date is June 10th. The end date is September 20th. Um, these are not optimal for Columbia. And so as we say in the training manual, let's actually, let's just change this. We'll go in, we'll change this to uh, January 1st to, let's say, um, April 1st. Um, and I'm gonna change the start year to 1990. Leave. The rest of the image date information the same, and then I'm going to um, leave all the rest of the parameters the same. I'm gonna collapse this, go back to the pixel time series, say submit pixel. And so notice I haven't changed the longitude or latitude, so what's happening is the, the GUI is grabbing this latitude and longitude, building an image collection around it using the new image dates that we've given it, and now it's producing a new output. Ah, now in this case, we see in the gray time series, that um, a signal is more evident here. Okay, so we see a fairly stable period up until about uh, 2005. Uh, precipitous uh, drop in, you know, over two years down to 2007, uh, and then some type of recovery, if we want to call it that, um, over subsequent years. Now the algorithm didn't track this very well, but we can see in the source imagery that there's actually a signal there. And that's the first step. So the first step is always to try and find the, uh, the, the right time window uh, uh, to, to build the land, the land render time series to go into the algorithm. And then the second step is to sort of get the parameters to, to actually capture that. Okay, so we've, we've gotten partway there. Now we have to find some better parameters. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna, first thing is that I, I feel like I've got about 30 years maybe of, of decent imagery here from 2000 back to 1990. There might be some missing years in the first uh, parts of the 1990s, but it looks like we have enough to actually ask for more um, segments. The rule of thumb is about um, no more than uh, one segment for every three or four years uh, of, of the, the time series. So if I've got, say, 25 years, I divide that by three. That gives me roughly eight segments. You could go higher, but uh, we'll just try with eight segments. What this means is it gives the algorithm more opportunity to play around with the, uh, with the fitting. Um, we'll leave the rest of this the same, except I'm going to change the recovery threshold to 0 0.75. Um, and leave the rest the same. And you can read through some of the logic of these different parameters here to see why I'm doing that. But um, I'm only changing two things now, and let's just see what happens. 
and go back to the pixel time series. Again, I'm not messing with longitude and latitude, so it's just going to recalculate for that same pixel using these new parameters. Hit submit. Aha, uh -huh. and now because we've changed some of this, we actually are getting closer to what looks like the, the, the shape of the, the gray time series. Now, um, at, at some point, we can continue to work this, and as you'll see in the actual training, uh, you can go through multiple parameter changes to sort of explore how to fit this particular pixel better and better. At some point, uh, it, it, it becomes sort of a question as to whether you're over-interpreting uh, what the time series is telling you. So, for example, uh, in the gray time series, it's not clear just from the temporal trajectory alone without looking at the pixel and knowing something about the land, you know, what's happening between 2012, 2013, 14, it seems quite noisy here. Is that real? Is this an artifact of the imagery? Is this an artifact of the phonology of the area, etc.? So some of these kind of questions um, are, are really the domain of, of local area experts to know what seems realistic. Um, so again, this is a question of both finding the right time series of um, the right dates to build a collection of the time series that captures the processes you're interested in and then bring the algorithm to align the, the essentially the red line, the fitted line to those processes.